Hello friends, welcome to part 164. I hope you have visited the previous part 163. There are a lot of parts only for members. Please become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member to gain access to these videos. Please subscribe, it will help you with your cloud journey on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. So there are a variety of questions on this playlist. If possible, go through the entire playlist. It will help you score full marks as close as possible to the full marks, okay? And it will also set up very solid foundation for what? For AWS Solution Architect Associate. Let's jump into this question. See, the story goes this way. You are on premises. You already have a monolithic application. Monolithic, what does the term monolithic mean? Whenever you think about monolithic, my friend, whenever you think about monolithic, it's about single point of failure. If there is a single point of failure, your application goes down, you're screwed up. You cannot avoid a downtime. Plus, what else is happening? It does not scale. It is difficult to maintain. You have so many problems with your on-premises monolithic application. And now what happens? Your company says, I want to switch to a future state. I want to migrate to AWS. Hey, AWS, you guys are champions of solving these problems. I want to come to you. I want to divide the application into microservices. You see here the correct? They are single layer. Now they want multi-layer. Okay. So which best practice of well-architected framework we have to implement? See, well-architected framework, these are all the best practices from AWS. It has these six pillars, security pillar, reliability, sustainability, and so on. Please pause this and read it carefully. And the first option says that we will integrate the functional testing. Functional testing, did the question talk about any functionality, any banking domain, any retail domain, any telecom domain? No. So why would we consider this? B says, hey guys, let's use automation to deploy the changes. Automation is not a pillar of AWS well-architected framework. C says, deploy the application to multiple locations. Your application is monolithic. You just have one developer. If you fall sick, you are screwed up. Moving that developer from Bangalore to Hyderabad won't help you. You have to create more developers. And that is why we need to implement loosely coupled dependencies. See, number one thing you should remember is whenever you see monolithic applications, you should always go for loose coupling. What does loose coupling do? Loose coupling means you don't have a single point of failure. You don't have one developer on which you are dependent on. You have three developers now. One falls sick, the other two can still do the job. So option D, implement loosely coupled dependencies is our answer. So this is a good read on loosely coupled scenarios. Please pause this and read this. And this is a good guidance for an architecture for loosely coupled workloads, network, storage, compute, deployment. Please have a read. Okay, now let's jump to the next question. My friend, you have a database and this database is a RDS MySQL database. So this is Amazon RDS. For MySQL, you can set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud in few clicks. If you want to set up a database in on-premises, you have a lot of hassles. You have to take the hardware, software, licensing costs, and so on. You can do that here as a piece of cake. But what is the problem? This resides in a single availability zone, only one zone. If it resides on one zone, data centers fail, you are screwed up. So what you have to do, you have to improve the availability so that even if there is a zonal failure, your application is still up. So isn't it obvious you have to do a multi-AZ deployment of your solution? Isn't it obvious you are on single AZ, you now have to go on multi-AZ? You just had one developer, now you have to go to three developers, that is the solution. Now let's scan through the options. A says, I will go multi-region. Buddy, first go multi-AZ. Then you go multi-region. Do not use a nuclear weapon. If if your Rafale fighters or your Beaufort's ammunitions can still work. B, it says, I would use SQS. SQS queue is for a messaging solution. Here, you do not have any requirement for messaging. Okay. And then they're talking about the same region, multiple rights to database. We are not talking about a messaging solution. C says create a database instance with multi-AZ deployment. This is exactly what we need. Before we do multi-region, we would go multi-AZ. And why we do multi-AZ? Because it helps you with high availability of your applications. 
it is a durable relational database deployed on three availability zones if one data center of one az drops the other two az's are still there to pick your workloads and this is how it works this is your multi az instance here you can pause this and understand the architecture this gives you more details about reader instances writer instances and so on so you see these these are reader instances these are writer instances and logs are sent to both the readers so this would be our final answer this looks correct but let us not ignore option d option d is again talking about sqs 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 is a fully managed messaging queue for microservices here we are not talking about microservices here we are just talking about a pure rds database hence we will lock option c convert db instance into multi az deployment now this next one is again a simple question where it is talking about what are the different pillars of well architected framework we did see that there are six pillars of this well architected framework we caught operational excellence we caught security we caught reliability we caught performance efficiency we caught cost optimization and then we have sustainability anything and everything nowadays it has to consider sustainability you have to go go green you have to do go green you have to reduce the carbon footprints you cannot be a pain in the ass for the environment you cannot be like donald trump and ignore that climate change is not for real you cannot be there are a lot of positives with that person but then there are certain negatives which will hamper big time so what did we see that resource scalability is not popular that system elasticity is not a pillar that agile development is not a pillar well architected framework does not care whether you use a waterfall model or you use an agile model nobody cares you have those are project management stuff those are how you govern the execution of the project but when we talk about designing the architecture and the framework this element agile development has no role to play in it our answers would be performance efficiency and operational excellence always remember any application you design on cloud environments you have to be efficient with respect to performance otherwise you will bleed through the nose when it comes to paying the charges of these cloud environments one thing you should always remember cloud is dead expensive the first year the first year you would not come to know after 5 years you will go bankrupt if you put all your applications on cloud and your applications if they are not performing well you are going to pay a lot more second is operational excellence why are you going on cloud you don't want a lot of load on your it teams to maintain these infrastructures to maintain these applications so what cloud is doing is i take the infrastructure management away from you you manage your applications that is the advantage okay friends so if you have not yet subscribed please do so it will help you with your cloud journey you can click for a very small subscription you can become a cloud colonel or a cloud ninja member and gain access to a lot more paid content the paid content plus the free content will enable you to prepare well to score well for the aws cloud certified practitioner exam plus it creates a solid base for the next one that is your solution architect associate this brings us to the end of part 164 remember you will have to consider your knowledge to weed out the wrong options and arrive at the right answer that is exactly what we teach as a part of these playlists one of the key highlight of this channel is we exactly teach how to attack each and every question based on your concepts based on common sense so please do not ignore those things those are vital elements to help you clear and prepare the certifications prepare for the certifications this brings us to the end of part 164 see you in the next part